This is the new flagship for Jeep. The resurrection of the iconic Wagoneer nameplate ushers in a new direction for the brand towards a more luxurious experience while not abandoning their rugged roots. So today, we're going to see if the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer is equal parts grand and equal parts Jeep. Yeah, this is the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, but you wouldn't really know that by just looking at it. It says Jeep almost nowhere on this thing. And we'll cover that when we talk about the exterior and the interior details, but what we have to do right now is jump behind the wheel and see if the ride is befitting of the $110,000 price tag. We are gonna start where we usually do, and that's talking about what's going on underneath the skin that kind of makes up the experience that you get on the road. From the ground up, you get a body on frame architecture, much like its rivals, the Escalade and the Navigator. This frame more specifically is actually borrowed from the Ram 1500, so it's strong and it's capable. An example of that is its ability to tow 9,850 pounds, which is actually 2,000 pounds more than the Escalade. And the other thing that you need for that big healthy towing figure is a big engine. In plebeian base Wagoneers, you get the 5.7 liter uh, naturally aspirated V8, or you have an option for a bigger engine. But in the Grand Wagoneer, you only get one engine option, and it's a 6.4 liter naturally aspirated V8. Now, where have we seen that before? That's right. It's the 392 motor making 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. And that's plenty for this thing. And all that power goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission tuned to be more smooth shifts than performance. But this thing still feels genuinely quick for how big it is. Unfortunately, obviously having that much displacement and this thing being over three tons, it's gonna come with some disadvantages. And the disadvantage is the miles per gallon that you get. So this thing is EPA averaging 15. We've been averaging 13 the week that we've had it. Yeah, so as a result, the fuel economy is pretty pathetic. We've been averaging just over 13 MPG during our week of testing with this thing. So that's not great, but I mean, what did you expect? Everyone keeps asking for a bigger, more luxurious, better appointed, better equipped, more powerful SUV. And all of those things come with a weight penalty. I think the interesting thing here to me is that you only get the 6.4 liter NAV8 and it's a great motor. However, it's interesting that they don't seem to make any effort to bring a more economical option. Now, of course, this is pretty early in its life cycle and you'd probably be a fool to expect not to see a 4xE PHEV in here. Now, the interesting thing here is I would love to see this engine, the 6.4, with the plug-in hybrid option. So that way, you can get to and from work economically, and when you want to beat on it, you can. <laughs> so that could be coming later down the road. However, what we have to remind ourselves of is this isn't a sports SUV. This is a luxury SUV. And what does that mean? But ride is paramount. The ride in here is really good. You have the quadra lift air suspension on all four tires and it does a fantastic job of kind of floating on the road. You hardly feel small and medium bumps and it handles large bumps in a very German way where you just get one thud and then it's basically over. There's no waddling after the bump is done. It's a very good ride. I wouldn't say it's S-Class level, but the fact that we're even mentioning that and comparing it to that should speak volumes. So, the Grand Wagoneer. I think we can all agree it does the grand part really well. But, let's head over to Road America and see how it does the Jeep portion. Off-roading the Grand Wagoneer. Thanks to Road America for letting us have a go. On their course again, this is $110,000 as tested. So. I'm pretty confident in saying that this is the most expensive, most luxurious thing that's ever been on this course. So we're gonna try to be a little bit nice to it, but what we have here is a body on frame, same chassis that you would get under your Ram 1500. So in theory, and it doesn't, it only says Jeep on the windshield there, but it should be able to go off-road. So we're gonna test it. Yeah, so we have 
uh, 22 inch rims, 22 inch wheels, <laughs> and all season tires. Yes. So not the best setup for this track, so that's why we're not going to do every single obstacle here. Yep. We're going to just try and keep it light. Um, the air suspension, I guess, how, how do you think it compares to like a normal suspension setup in a car like the Forerunner we were literally just in? I can't um, tell like that much of a difference. I think, I think in an off-road application, like on the road, it's a, it's a lot smoother and more comfortable, more like a luxury ride. Yeah. But on the road, like... We're, we're fully aired out on the suspension right now for maximum clearance and like you're not going to get a lot of like compression and rebound and like soaking up a lot of the yeah so the we so air suspension you have the ability to um i think lower it like half an inch and then raise it like 3.5 3.6 inches so right now we're all the way maxed up i think it's 10 inches of ground clearance yeah we are in sand and mud mode we're in snow mode so there's, Sorry, snow there's mode. rock Sand and mud and snow. And Auto and sport. Right. And you, it, we're in snow mode and you can't lock your transfer case or your rear diff. Until at you least, go into four low. And, until you go into four low and only rock mode. So you only can't, rock will lock the diff. You can't put yourself in snow and then lock it yourself, which yeah. is very odd. Um, yeah, you should be able to lock your diff independent of whatever it is you're doing. We tried and maybe we'll cut this part out and put it in voiceover if it's if you actually can, but okay, first obstacle, nice big hill. <laughs> actually got out of my it's, seat there. It's totally fine. I feel like it just feels very bloated with it's the very air big. suspension up. Like, yeah, so... I feel like it's <laughs> doesn't have a lot of give. Correct. Yeah, we did this. I'm not gonna do this hill because we are for sure gonna hit the front end of this thing, and I like the front end of this thing, so I don't wanna do that to Kelly. Um, but no, so yeah, you get a couple like options in terms of off-road mode and whatever um, and then actually one of the things that we we took the forerunner out here earlier it's like 4700 pounds this is like i think a ton heavier like this thing is a big mama and like we just wanted to make sure that we could get through because like we said we're on we're on all season tires like street tires big rims um so we want to make sure we didn't get stuck now this is the thing that i think paulo is not going to be happy that i'm turning left here because I'm gonna send it through the moguls. You should with this big old thing. Lock the rear diff before yes. you go over there. So we have to turn into neutral uh, to turn four low on, uh, and then you can actually on your passenger screen turn on your like front-facing camera or whatever. I didn't see where to do that. It's in the menu there. Um, so now I'm in four low. I can shift up to sand snow, which locks the transfer case, and then I go up to rock, which locks the rear diff. So in theory, we shouldn't get a bunch of wheel spin. We should get enough traction. We do have our GLP traction boards in the back just in case, but this is probably the most luxurious thing that's gone through this mogul section. I've got my heated seat on. I've got my massage seat on and we're gonna go for it. We gotta go into drive first. Yeah, that might help. <laughs> so yeah, we're locked. Transfer case is locked. Four low. Rear diff is locked. This oh, thing is boy. so big, I'm like, Kind of regretting this now. Yes. Glad that the parking sensor stays on. <laughs> it's no problem for this thing. <laughs> That's amazing. This thing is huge. Granted, we didn't go like full articulation and, and that sort of thing, but I'm impressed. Yeah, I think Let's... the rear locker really helped. So all the way aired out on the quadra lift air suspension, which is very nice on the road. Turning radius is pretty good. It's actually, yeah, <laughs> surprisingly For good for something this big. Yeah. Now my butt is too hot. <sighs> First world problems. Yeah, this camera's pretty nice. This is nice. I should start being in the car when we do the off-road stuff, because usually I'm outside in the snow or the mud, <laughs> getting B-roll of you doing this. This is way better deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Look at this. I know that this thing is huge, but it doesn't feel like super cumbersome out here. It does feel bigger and heavier than the Forerunner we were just out here in, but it doesn't feel like it's impossible to get through. Yeah. I think that's where we bottomed out the Forerunner. Yeah. Oh, there we go. It was it was looking for traction a little bit, but there was I, I had full confidence that we were going to get up. Yeah, we had enough momentum. There it is. That's the Grand Wagoneer 
$110,000 car, off-roading, pooning in the snow, because it's still a Jeep. It can do it. This thing, man, I gotta tell you, for, for how big it is, I'm shocked at how good it did the off-road course. Yeah, I think the, the ability to raise it up and then the locking diff, I think, really helped us yeah. out. Fantastic. Tell me about the look of this thing. Yeah, so we have the Obsidian version or I guess package and that basically means that everything gets murdered out black and I think it looks fantastic. Yes. Up here you have a really aggressive front end. You have Wagoneer here in the grill. Um, you have your tow hooks and they're kind of like stealth black as well. You can't really notice that they're there. Yeah. Um, and, I, and then I think my favorite feature one of my favorite features on the exterior is you have sequential headlights and also turn signals and the same thing in the back as well. They look really cool. It's very Audi to me. Yeah, it's very premium feeling. And actually in tandem with the headlights thing, now that I'm noticing it, I do want to call out. So when they initially launched this thing, there was like no Jeep associated with it because they're trying to establish that kind of upmarket feel. But we looked around this thing and there's like three places that it says Jeep. It says it on the side of your projector here. It says it underneath your wing mirror and it says it on the windshield, on the yeah. actual glass itself. Other than that, that's all the Jeeps. But around the side here, this is where you really get a sense of how big this thing is. And like any three row massive family hauler SUV, there's not a lot you can do stylistically with it. So it does look big. Like the front half I think looks great. The back half with that rear window looks a little bit chonky to me. Yeah, it, it does look big, but I think the Obsidian, everything being all black, I think it kind of masks that and you don't notice it as much as you would if this thing was red or blue. Like yeah. I've seen some no, on I the streets agree. and it is a lot more noticeable and you're like, oh wow, that does look quite big, but everything kind of stealthy black, it looks sleek. And I don't think that's the first thing that people really notice when they look at it. No, it's not like totally out of the blue. It's just like this something that I've noticed with the, our week with it. But like you said, the Obsidian package is definitely a must for me. And I think probably for you as well, yes. you get the big 22 inch wheels and they're caked in mud now, but you know, they look fantastic around the side. You've got Grand Wagoneer, um, US spec cars are the only ones that get the flag. Canada doesn't get it. Nobody else gets it because America. USA. Uh, and then of course, the running boards. We've talked about running boards on Downshift a lot. Never use them, right? Yeah, but we it's both It's been a pleasure yeah. using these this week. They're great. <laughs> They've been nice. Well, I don't they know what about force them. you, like they're so wide, you kind of like have to use them. Yes. And the fact that they're, they're stealth, like they literally, they, the underneath blends in with the color of the car. Yeah. You can't you really you tell they're there. they're there. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. In, this also has the quadrilift air suspension. So when it's parked and you get out of the car, it'll lower itself into its lowest setting. Yep. And then all the way aired out, we get 10 inches of clearance like we did for the off-road course. It was great. Yeah. And then in the back, it's, it's oh, pretty- Oh, it says Jeep right here. Sorry, one more. That's the last one. So fourth one. Yep. Um, it's pretty simple back here. I actually think this is probably my least favorite look of it. Grand Wagoneer, you know, stitched pretty in big, big letters. Mm -hmm. um, you have your, dual kind of truck exhaust they're mm -hmm. they're kind of they're they're kind of hidden actually yeah they're not trying to be like showy about their exhaust and this thing sounds really good so they could be showy about it and they're just very incognito i do think it could Unbecoming. sound better though i mean it's the same engine sure. in the three like yeah. if this, if this thing sounds like, if this thing sound but if you if it had an active exhaust yes that would set it over the yes. edge for me 100 percent. um and then i do just want to say it's got like a really interesting it's not carbon fiber but it's like an yeah, interesting it's not even pattern you could feel around you know, the license plate yeah there's just like a little texture you know and this it's like that around the rest of the car too especially on the front end like yeah you can see inside the headlight there's almost like a carbon, carbon fiber, fiber weave here and then down on this like you have it actually like embossed into the plastic like there is a sense of like luxury and occasion about this thing and with that being said there's also stuff about the glass right yeah so it's kind of like got a film or like a temperament to it and I've got a UV or a, a polarizer uh, filter on the camera lens and usually I can use that to get through uh, the glass to get you know shots of the interior I can't do it with this it's like very tinted it's it's pretty cool I think the more you look at this thing the more features stick out and you notice how like luxurious and how much time and effort actually went into styling this thing but yeah. anyway let's get let's talk about the interior let's do it the interior here, it feels super expensive. Like they nailed the design to me. There's so many different like materials and textures and patterns and you know, very much like the outside they carried it in here. It feels super, super expensive. Yeah, I agree. It feels unique in here. And I think that they nailed it on the head with how luxurious it feels in here. It's primarily dominated by screens. Mm -hmm. You have eight screens. If you and, include your- Yeah, if you include mirror. your- um, Which is a screen because you can do the thing. Yep. And it's 
A total of 72 inches. That's so many. Yeah, bigger that's, than Matt's... That's bigger any than any of my TVs. TVs that he owns, yes. if you add it all up, which is kind of crazy. I don't think you have a 72-inch TV, no, sir. No, I don't. So, I think, ha! I think it's like a 50. Dude, if Mike... <laughs> Four? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, wow. Thanks, dude. Mine's also 50. Um, the cluster is digital. There's so much that you can customize in there, but I think the coolest feature that's on the digital cluster is the night vision. Oh, It'll yeah. highlight moving objects, people, human, or human animals, yeah, aliens. Yeah, anything with a pulse. Yes. <laughs> like, hi yeah. It'll highlight them yellow. So, you know, you don't have to constantly look down, but you'll see this, like, giant yellow block. But I just think that's awesome in low-light conditions. It's one of those features that you didn't know you needed until you experience it. I think it's just amazing that they can, like, zero in on something that's alive. And pick it up. Versus, like, oh, this, I don't know, this other building. car is hot. Right. You know, that's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, it's super cool. It's running the latest Uconnect system. Uh, which is really good. You have the wireless Apple CarPlay, which mm -hmm. again, I think is one of those features that you don't know how good it is until you experience wireless Apple CarPlay yeah, or Android Auto. It, it makes so much sense, especially because you have a wireless charging pad and you have slots for your phone. So it's, it, it just works well. Yeah, they thought of that. Um, you know, you have your HVAC screen here that can control your heated seats, your cooled seats, the massagers, which by the way, it's, they're not, usually it's gimmicky, but in here, Feels really good. Super good. Works really very, well. Very, very good. Um, this screen, the HVAC screen, is covered in like a weird film as a at, compared to the other screens in here. I yeah. I don't know why they did that, but sometimes it also struggle to pick up our finger, our touches. Yeah, I don't know if it's because that screen rolls back to release or show you, you know, where you can plug in stuff. But yeah, even when I was getting B-roll, like this screen filmed differently than the rest of the screens in here. Yeah. Which was a little odd. No, it was weird. Over here, you have a passenger screen as well built into the dash. And yeah, I can't see it from the driver's side because it's like they've done something again with the film. Yeah, it's like the, the tempered glass or yeah, whatever. So yeah. only I can see it, um, but it is super cool. It has a bunch of features that are usable. So it has like a nanny camera so you can see everything that's going on in the back seats. Fam cam. Um, also has like an off-road mode. So if we're you know, going off trail, I can also look at the cameras and kind of help Matt spot, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then I think the other cool feature is if Matt's phone is connected to wireless Apple CarPlay, I can search here for Google Maps, somewhere we want to eat, whatever, and then throw it onto the main infotainment screen for Matt now to get directions, which is super cool. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. Like this, unlike BMW's little gesture control, this is a useful innovation. It's not just innovation for the sake of innovation. It is a useful thing that I would use all the time. Yeah super cool no it's awesome and that's that's all the screens up front including this but there's more in the back yeah there's two rear entertainment screens which are fire stick enabled and the color the quality it's really crisp they look great and then you also have an hvac control screen back there they've heated and cooled seats back there and then obviously they can control you know the temperature and whatnot yeah it's it's kind of amazing the amount of screens in yeah, here and they're absurd. all so good the resolution the black levels they're fantastic um talking about the tech stack a little bit further in terms of the actually how it drives the autopilot on here very good top five i would say not quite cadillac not quite uh tesla not quite hyundai but very good uh you don't have to like you don't have to salt the steering wheel every time to remind it that you're there. I think a lot better than the Ford we were in. Yep, I would, week, I would agree. The Raptor. Um, the head-up display is great. You get a lot of information there. The only thing that I don't love here from the driver's seat is interacting with the heated and cooled seat controls. If you're not going to use that lower screen, you have kind of quick shortcut buttons next to your infotainment system up top. But they don't have, they don't seem to have capacitive touch. If they do, I can't feel it. No, they so don't. So I never know no, they don't. if it's and working. You have capacitive touch down here on like your lane keep assist to turning that off. So I, I think that's a really small miss, but it is something that we should bring up. Yeah, because it's like, is it on? Is it, you know, you have to like yeah. look for the lights. I do think that the cup holders are a little bit small. And I'm actually surprised that there's not more up here. Like, yeah. I guess you have one in your door still as well, but. Yeah, I think the thing that bothers me is like, I expect them all to be too small because they all are, except for the Forerunner. But like, I can't even put our extenders in here because yeah. this is too There's too high next room. to it. You, know, you can't yeah. do it. Another weird thing is it claims I think this thing has standard automatic rain detecting wipers, but there's no setting for it. They're either terrible or they don't exist because I did not get it to work once. So I was thinking maybe it's just always on, but yeah, it never did it unless I turned it on like an yeah. intermittent speed. Yeah, I did not get them to work once. 
Um, so those are the only two things that I don't like about this thing. It, it, to my experience, it doesn't have rain sensing mm -hmm. wipers. And also the turn signal on it does here sound cheap. Sounds like a 2002 Kia. Yeah, it sounds cheap. It's not great. Yeah, that's weird. Those are the only two things I don't like about these interior. <laughs> and then I think another kind of quirky, cool feature that this thing has that you don't know you need until you experience it <laughs> is the cooler yes. in the center console, and it does such it a good gets job. <laughs> super cold. Yeah, it's awesome. Like you can put your water bottles in there. It's big Genuinely enough for analogy. It's big enough for I think your water bottle as well. Yeah. Really deep. So that's a super cool feature um and then you know just the overall feel in here you have a giant panel roof here and then you also have a sunroof in the third row i mean it yeah. feels so spacious in here it does and the second row seats they're they're really spacious back there we talked about some of the amenities you get the heated and cooled seats actually to be honest like i might rather sit in the third row because you have like power reclining seats back there. You have a huge amount of room. Me at 6'1", so you would fit back there too. Like you have plenty of knee room, plenty of head room. You've got your own dedicated sunroof. Your side window is huge. You've got, you know, USB C's back there. Like it's great. I think there's, there's no bad seat in this car. No, absolutely not. Of course, then we talk about the trunk. The trunk is not huge, but this is not the extended wheelbase version. The extended wheelbase version is coming. So you'll get like, you know, a longer wheelbase with a bigger trunk, kind of like a Suburban. So that'll be super nice. Um, and then of course you have your power buttons in the trunk to electronically drop and raise the third row. You can also drop the second row from the trunk, but you can't bring it back up. Mm. And then I think there's also some controls to drop and lower some of the seats in the back we yeah. open up the, the back seats as well. And then another cool thing is like, let's say, you know, your kids hop in, they put the headrests up, they jump out, they're going to soccer. You want to put the headrest down so you have more visibility into the rear. Mm -hmm. You can control that all up here, which is super cool as well. Yeah, I think everything about this thing was well thought out in terms of how it's going to be used. Yeah, it feels like a $110,000 car in here. Absolutely. And I think that's a good time to get into the final thoughts. Yes. So that's the new Jeep Grand Wagoneer. In terms of the name, as far as the Jeep part goes, it has more off-road capability than any of its drivers will ever ask of it. And in terms of the grand part of the Wagoneer, well, I'll put it this way. I would rather spend my time behind the wheel of this Jeep than a Mercedes GLS. So with that, we hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.